I was asked to deliver a small note on how did the message or the actions of Mahatma Gandhi change my life and influence my life. Uh, I think I could point to three main aspects and how they shape the person I am or the person I would like to be. First of all, I would point to the resolve and the determination of Gandhi in all aspects of his life. I think that's a source of inspiration for anyone, uh, anyone that has to face hardship, anyone that faces injustice, and finding the strength to carry on is something one can look upon the example of Mahatma Gandhi and find perhaps strength that one does not know that one shares or has. Secondly, uh, the pursuit of certain shared values. I think uh, Gandhi is universal and is a reference for all humankind because he presides over the very sh shared values that I think are common to mankind. Justice, the pursuit of social justice, the fight for freedom, the wish for every man and woman to be free, be it free from oppression, free from poverty, free from want. I think all those aspects are key aspects of Gandhi's legacy and his, of his struggle. And obviously the struggle for pluralism be it religious pluralism uh, in a land, a country that has all religions in the world, as your Excellency Ambassador very often reminds us, that has so many thousand languages and so great diversity, this has to be a key aspect of anyone's life. And if this is obviously valuable for India, of course it is even more valuable for the world where the diversity is even greater. And then the third set of, uh, of, of items that I think are very relevant have to do with what I think is probably what distinguishes Gandhi the most as an individual and as a personality of the 20th century and of human history, and that is nonviolence. I think of all aspects that one can signal out to point out the relevance of Gandhi, nonviolence certainly has to be one of them. Because first of all, he cherishes dialogue and reason, and although he cherishes dialogue and reason, unfortunately, not always is the other side available for dialogue and reason. And when the other side is not available for dialogue and reason, sometimes one thinks, well, one has to resort to violence or to strength or to brute force. But Gandhi proves that that is not necessarily so. Because one can use passive resistance. One can resort to civil disobedience in the face of injustice. So violence is not a, 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 a necessary evil. Violence is not inevitable. And if you can free a continent without the use of violence, I think that proves very eloquently that you can do without violence. And now having pointed out to these three aspects, the question is how does this, how does this, how does this inspire me or inspire me as a, as, as a citizen, as a teacher, as someone who holds political office? Well, as a citizen, I would say that it inspires me as just another citizen of the Republic and of the world. The uh, challenge to change, uh, as it's pointed out very often, it's up to each one of us uh, to start the change, even if our contribution is very modest. I think every citizen, regardless of his office or of his background, has a duty, uh, the obligation to provide change. As a teacher, because that is my profession, I teach law across the street from this. <laughs> I can say I'm at home at the faculty places as well. Uh, but as a teacher, the values that I mentioned are the values that are at the core of the rule of law, that at the core of the defense of liberties and fundamental rights and of an international community based not on strength, not on force, but on understanding and dialogue. And so that, as an example for my students, I think, and for me as a teacher, is also relevant. And finally, I'm also here because I hold some political office, right now. I'm a member of parliament, and I'm also in local government. And I think what I already mentioned, change is important, because there one can enact, one can enact change, one can do more for change, but one should be guided by the principles that should orient change. And there I think that the values and the philosophy of Mahatma Gandhi in order to regards public service, service to others, not just change, because change in itself cannot, can be a, is not necessarily a good thing when we're changing for the worse. Change oriented by values and change oriented by the need to serve the others. And finally, I, would, I didn't mention this earlier, but very recently something that is within, embedded in the, the thought and uh, the philosophy of Gandhi is also particularly relevant to all, all, all of these of my, uh, uh, of my, uh, my several hats as a citizen, as a teacher, as a political office holder, and it has to do with uh, Gandhi's thoughts and his, and his and his reflections on nature and on the way we treat animals. Uh, I had the opportunity and the privilege of presenting a bill that changed our civil code and recognized animals not as things but as sentient beings. 
And I think the way we look at nature and animals is also a great deal, has a great deal to do with how we deal with ourselves as a civilization and what we wish to project to the world. And of all these things, I must say, this is probably one of the areas where I'm not uh, up to the, the challenge label for uh, uh, Gandhi. Uh, I think there's, this is an area where I think a lot still needs to be done. But I think I point this out as something that needs to be addressed, that is being addressed nowadays. And we find, again, inspiration in one of the greatest minds and, uh, and personalities of the 20th uh, century. Uh, in short, I think Gandhi's example goes far beyond the political personality or the person that led India to independence, although obviously uh, that's the key role Gandhi played in the history of the 20th century. But there is a role for Gandhi in the history of mankind, now and in the future, that I think should and will be emphasized and recognized by future generations. And I will conclude my remarks just giving an example of my life as a, a, a president of a local council here in the city of Lisbon. I am president of the local council where the, the Hindu community of Portugal is is, has its seat, and precisely where we have the Mahatma Gandhi Avenue. And Lisbon is one of the very few cities in the world outside India, I believe that the only one, that has two statues of the Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> one, the Mahatma Gandhi standing alone in movement, showing his, uh, his, uh, his uh, willingness and his ability to, to change, and one next to the temple and to the community, together with his wife, also I hear the first statue in the world that depicts both Gandhi and his wife. And I point this out just to to, to underline that not only are we privileged to have Mahatma Gandhi Avenue as a tribute to peace and nonviolence, but this has been attracting other relevant statesmen that have been inspired by Gandhi. So it's with great honor that in the very neighborhood, not across the street from the Mahatma Gandhi Avenue, we have Tsang Abin Street, not far we have Nelson Mandela Square, and very soon, tomorrow actually, we will have Vili Kwan Square. So Nobel Prize laureates, something that Mahatma Gandhi never ended up being, for the reasons we all know, but something that the Mahatma Gandhi never needed, because if I think uh, something would honor, or someone would be honored, it would be the Nobel Prize to have Gandhi as its recipient, and not necessarily the other way around. And I think this proves a great deal about the dimension of Gandhi, and the way he should and does continue to inspire.